Can we get itself? Oh, nay. That's not good. Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today we have a complete autonomous tracking comparison and review between the Skydio 2 and the DJI Air 2S. Now this video is not about all the other features. Those are important. I don't really care about those for this particular video. If you want to see that video, it's up in the corner there. This video is all about tracking, and in particular, solo tracking. So how well do these drones track me autonomously while I'm out riding my bike or running or whatever the heck may be? Now what makes this test interesting is that both these units are priced at $9.99. Now while I've got plenty of experience on both of these drones from a tracking standpoint, for this test, we're gonna do it back to back, the exact same course, the exact same route, the exact same conditions, back to back with both drones to see how well they perform. The test is gonna start out on this open field right here to make sure everything's all good. And then from there up a slight rise uh, around the corner of this building uh, and then down this tree line path. And this is where things will get tricky. And I'm gonna go as long as the drones let me go. Um, and then I'll turn around and come back and, and try to get back to the same starting point, uh, hopefully on one autonomous test run. Now in the case of the Air 2S, because it does require your controller to go with you, uh, I'm using this $20 mount I bought. I actually just posted a review on this a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's been working fine for me, like for 20 bucks, it's, it's good stuff. Um, in the case of Skydio, I'm just using the drone and throw my phone um, on the mount because it's handy, but you don't actually need the phone on the mount. You can throw it in your pocket, and I do that later on in the video as well. Uh, but just to kind of clarify what mounts and what products I'm using. Now, because this is a newer video, you're probably mostly interested in why the Air 2S is different. I'm gonna give it to you like in a couple seconds here. Uh, essentially, the Air 2S has ActiveTrack 4.0, which are the latest tracking technologies, and that's built on APAS 3.0. APAS standing for the Advanced Pilot Assistant System, which is basically the obstacle avoidance system in the drone itself. And it's gonna use all of its sensors, in particular, its new upwards facing sensors to do that. Now, the Air 2S has four sets of sensors. Uh, on the front, you have the forward facing sensors, just like before, uh, and then on the front upper edge, you have the upwards facing sensors. On the back, you have rearward facing sensors. And on the bottom, you have downwards facing sensors. Those bottom sensors are primarily used for ground avoidance, uh, as well as when it gets close to the ground to track the ground as opposed to using GPS. There are, however, no side sensors here. So it's not gonna be able to theoretically go side to side directly without avoiding something, but has some tricks up its sleeve that we'll see so that it doesn't try to hit trees directly on the side. Meanwhile, on the Skydio 2, it's got seven sensors in total. Uh, there's three on the top, uh, one on each wing, and then one in the center of the body. And then when you flip it over, uh, there are three more on the bottom there. You see these cameras. Uh, and then on the very front, there's also the front camera as well uh, that is used for the actual filming. With that, let's get these things up in the air. And by the way, definitely not sponsored by any company here. Okay, so here we are out here with the Air 2S up in the air already. I got it up in position there. You can see on the left-hand side there, that little green icon that indicates that APAS is on. Uh, if you switch over to sport mode, you'll notice that sport mode obstacle avoidance now turns off. We don't want that because I don't want to hit any trees. So that red icon left-hand side there, back to normal mode, you'll see it there. And if we go up and look at APAS settings itself, uh, you'll see under safety at the very top, we have it on bypass, meaning it should in theory go around a tree as opposed to just stopping in front of it uh, or turning it off entirely. So with that, all we have to do is simply highlight myself. Uh, so you can see right there, I am now highlighted. It sees me. I will choose actor track. Uh, and then I'm gonna choose parallel, which tells it to keep it off the side of me and then tap go. It is simple as that, except to remember to go ahead and hit the record button. I really don't understand why that's not automatic. Just seems kind of obvious to me that that should be like an automatic sort of thing. Um, so down the bottom, we see 4K 30. Uh, if we try to change that to 5K, uh, 5 and 4K, it will go ahead and disable. Uh, it won't work in that mode there. And now we're ready to roll. So we're gonna go up this little stretch right here, just kind of slowly, and then I'll get at the full speed gonna go around a small little like a uh, pump station building thing you'll see it there we go and I'm just gonna let it do what it wants to do here so in theory it's supposed to stay off to my side uh, we'll see what happens in just a second and it's it says the spots too narrow it's it's only as narrow as you you make it my friend by the way just to show you what it's looking at right now and uh, that's what I stopped at. So what I wanted to do was to be over here. Highlight myself, there we go. Actor track, parallel, and go. And now let's see how all this works. There we go. Now the goal here is that it tracks me without hitting the trees which are in between me and it. Uh, we may try the trace from behind here once we get going, but whoo, that's getting a little tight there. 
Uh, and the problem is if it hits something here, there's a moderate chance it's gonna end up in the canal, which, oh nay. Hey, little buddy, no, don't go back that way. Yeah, it's not, it's not working very well. Not gonna lie here. So, let's try trace instead. Okay, it sees me, active track, trace, and go. So this will tell it to basically follow uh, behind me as opposed to off the side, which should be easier in theory here, but we'll have to see. Still got things to avoid, but at this juncture, it's better than off to the side. You can see it's doing fairly well. It's keeping itself out of the trees up above there. Uh, sorry for my jacket rattling. It's windy, obviously, because I'm riding. So far, so good, though. We're now in trace mode. I think I see someone up ahead, so I'm going to have to have it move out of the way when I get a bit closer. Okay, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, entertaining or something like that, simply whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out the video and the channel quite a bit. In case you're curious, by the way, whether or not Zoom works, it does work in active track mode. This is potentially useful if you want to pull it out quite a bit further. Uh, obviously, you're losing resolution when you do that, but you know, it's an option. Okay, we are all clear. See how it gets itself back into the trace mode there. Nice, it plopped itself through the trees, good to go. Okay, at this point I'm gonna turn around and see if it'll fall, whoa. Hello, little buddy, that was a little bit close, don't you think? Does it see me? Active track, trace, and go. So it lost me there for a second but now it's got me again. So at this point, we're just gonna fast forward a bunch because frankly, it's kind of boring to watch uh, and it tracks just fine this entire direction through. Uh, as long as it's in the trees, kind of behind me or out of the trees off the side, it's tracking no problems at all, except right here when I go to stop. What are you doing? Buddy, I'm over here. That's a tree, it's a poor, no, dude, no. Back over here. What was that all about? A little drunk? And this is the exact same thing that happened just a few minutes ago. When I stop, it just simply decides to run into me. And I'm not stopping that fast, by the way. I'm just kind of like rolling to a stop. There we go, after track, parallel. Now you'll notice it's flying slightly behind me as opposed to directly to my side. What it's doing here is compensating for the lack of sideways optical avoidance sensors. By flying slightly behind me, it's able to keep the aircraft at a bit of an angle and use these frontward sensors to detect what's going on slightly to the side of it as well as in front of it. It's an interesting little trick they started doing on the original Mavic Air 2 and it's carried through to the 2S as well. I'm a little unclear what's gonna happen up here. We'll let this guy go past. It's a car on the bike path, which isn't really ideal, but... <laughs> Oh, okay. You stop in here, I guess. So, drone got a freebie. Let's see what happens here. We'll go around this tree, through this tree. Can we get itself? Oh, nay. That's not good. Now, I know it might look sunny out here right now, but it snowed this morning. That's cold. Cold. That's cold. Oh. Now, obviously, after that happened, I went back to DJI and I gave them all the footage and everything. Uh, and they in turn took that from the PR and media team to their engineering team. Uh, and they looked at it and they came back to me and said, it's the way it works. And yeah, so here's the exact quote on the screen right there. Uh, and what they're essentially saying, one bit there is that as you got closer, the trees entered into the front sensor detection range, but the drone was traveling too fast or was too close to the object already for it to respond accordingly. So what they're saying is when it saw the tree, it said shrug. Uh, but here's the thing, I don't think it saw the tree. I think there's an issue with the sensors because normally when it sees something, it puts orange in the upper edges and it never did that here. Versus other times when it sees things, it shows the orange where the actual obstacle is. They then go on to say that there's an option then that I can turn off sideways tracking to reduce this sort of thing. 
However, that does not explain the cases where it nearly flew straight into me, nor does it explain the cases where it flew straight into trees straight on and not sideways tracking, for which I have plenty of those over the last week. And I'm betting that once you enable after track or master shots, which increases the processing power required by the unit itself, it's losing some of the processing power allocated to obstacle avoidance. Because in all the testing I've done, if I'm flying without after track or master shots, it sees the objects, it avoids the objects. If I'm flying with either of those two things, it sees the objects and it hits the objects straight on almost every single time. I, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what to say. It is what it is. Let's switch over to Scotty at this point. Okay, I'm gonna get myself tagged. So on the Scotty, it's as simple as that. I literally just tap myself, it sees me as an object to track. Uh, I'm gonna tell it to get on my right hand side, which is where I want it, there we go. Uh, and I'm gonna increase the range a little bit, so I'm gonna move forward so it sees that's my right hand side. There we go. Now it knows that's my right hand side, perfect. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna increase the range a bit because that's where I want it to be, out. I'm also gonna increase the height slightly there. It's a little bit finickier in terms of controls on this uh, because of the fact that it is the phone controls. Now, right now it's in front of me, but once I start moving, it'll slide to the right. As you can see right there, it looks like we're all clear all the way down here. And there we go, it's to the right. Uh, so, Skydio 2, here we go. Number before on the Air 2S on this turn, it lost me. Uh, so, it's doing the exact same kind of positioning as the Air 2S, except now it's got itself off to the side there, exactly where I originally wanted the Air 2S to be. Uh, and you can see, so far so good on avoiding the trees. Sorry again for my jacket. I thought about changing and taking off the jacket, but I wanted to keep things identical from a color standpoint, and contrast between the two units. So you can see at this point, no issues. It's, it's cruising along, just where I wanted the previous test run to be. What I'll do up here, as I'll have a pot behind me, and we'll uh, see how well this does. I'm not even gonna stop. I'm just gonna show you what it can pull off here. So, wanna go behind me. Let's see when it does it. So I was trying to find an opportunity to do it. Hasn't found that opportunity yet. We'll do it on the way back though, don't worry. This is actually the turnaround spot right here. So, same spot as I used before. We'll turn around and have a track from behind. We'll see if it can slide its way through here. There we go, little guy. And this is where you can start to see sort of the uh, depth and impressiveness of the Skydio 2. On this Skydio platform at large with all the sensors it has on there, uh, it's clearly built for this sort of thing. Now, just like the Air 2S, this portion is pretty boring as well because it's working just fine. So we're gonna fast forward here as well to get up to the good stuff, which is of course the same portion that the Air 2S crashed. So I'm gonna tell it now that I can go out and find the right side there. Let's see it do that. I'm gonna slow down a little bit like I did before last time. Let it find its spot to go out to the trees. I love doing this with this drone. It's so fun to watch it swerve these trees. Just give it a second and it'll be like, boom, out I go. Almost, come on, go out there, little guy. There we go. Come on, that's cool, you know that's cool. Uh, and then we're making the turn right here. Just like before, that's a tree at Kerplunked. So, this thing clearly went wide around it, smart move. And will it lose me, will it lose me? Oh, it almost hit the bottom of the tree or top of the tree or bottom of the top of the tree, whatever. And we got ourselves back home. See, that's how it's done. Now let's, let's take it back inside and talk about this because it's not as straightforward as you think, uh, despite the fact that we lost a drone and it's not as straightforward as I'll explain in just a second. Okay, with both of those tests complete, you may be saying to yourself, well, the winner is obviously Skydio. And yes, when it comes to tracking, that is true, except the word tracking is kind of a little bit mixed. Uh, so tracking actually means tracking and obstacle avoidance. From an obstacle avoidance standpoint, that's actually where the DJI drone failed. And in fact, over the last while, when the Air 2S didn't have anything to avoid, 
the actual footage was great. For example, this other section right here, I went like three or four minutes nonstop before I eventually ran on a road. Uh, and it looked really, really nice as I went behind trees and all that kind of stuff. Tracking wise, no problems at all. But ultimately all of that cinematography tracking prowess means nothing if it can't avoid the obstacles, which is the entire point of the sensors. It also means nothing if your drone ends up in the canal. That said, this is a good time to point out the DJI drone isn't the only one to end up in the canal. This little guy's brother, also ended up in the canal. In fact, a week after the Scadio 2 released, its friend, due to a bug, uh, ended up in the canal. In fact, it's still out there in the canal waiting for someone to go pick it up. Just like the Air 2S is still out there in the canal because this actually isn't the Air 2S. This is the Air 2 with extra props on it. Uh, the Air 2S is still in the canal as well. So in this case, the Skydio, they issued a firmware update uh, for the drone within about a week, which is pretty impressive to fix that bug. Uh, in the case of DJI, they say they're working towards uh, improving the software and the hardware, but there's no particular time frame for when they might kind of sort these sort of things out. The challenge you have if you're trying to make a decision, uh, these drones are very different. This is a sports tracking drone. It is really good at sports tracking drone, but not very good at anything else. If we look at the DJI drone, it is very, very good at everything else, but not terribly great at sports tracking. And ultimately our recognition is pretty darn simple. If you're all into sports tracking and you're just gonna use it primarily for sports tracking, go with Skydio. That's the best option out there. Um, if however, you're primarily gonna use it for everything else with a little bit of sports tracking, then this is probably a better drone. Just simply gotta be more careful with it so you don't end up in the drink. With that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or check out all my full reviews and other videos and stuff on both these drones linked somewhere on the screen. You'll find it. Have a good one. Oh, and I'll leave you here with this video, the second run I did towards the end, full send, full speed on that same tree turn with the Scadio, just because I was feeling bad for myself about losing the drone. Uh -huh.